Welcome to New Zealand's home of rugby, Eden Park, Auckland. And the All Blacks defending the trophy, first donated by former Governor Lord Bledisloe nearly 60 years ago. It's the symbol of trans-Tasman rugby supremacy. It's the Bledisloe Cup. Well, conditions here, as you can see, are very blustery indeed. There's a very strong nor'easter prevailing, but thankfully there's no round, and the ground is in very good situation, so that is great news for the Australian team. They arrived a short time ago, Simon Portovan with the ball. Journey's end, as he calls it. Bill, Bill Campbell, the giant, who'll play such a crucial role today in the line-outs. But Ian Williams, Tim Gavin there, the reserve. But the Australians have been very happy with their build-up over the last few days. Australian captain, Nick Barr-Jones. Nick. How's everyone feeling? Oh, extremely well, mate. Uh, we've had a good preparation over the last three days and we've just had a good uh, physical or mental build-up for the game at uh, the pub before we left. And, yeah, uh, we're feeling good. What about the new boys? Yeah, look, they're very nervous. I mean, we all are. And um, I told them to cherish the moment, the nerves. Um, they'll never forget their first test, but uh, hopefully they'll savour the moment at uh, the end of the game. And um, I think they'll do very well. We told them, you know, not to go out and, and just try and do the simple things well, but go out and... Uh, and really lead the, the, the team and um, and play with confidence. And uh, I'm sure you'll see some great games from them. Good luck and go and do your stuff. New Zealand's last loss on home soil was at this ground in 1986. The Bledisloe Cup was at stake and 14 of today's 30 players took part in the third and deciding test match. Kirk is there and now it's Craig Green. With the series level, Black, the All Blacks tackler. moved the ball from all parts of the field in a style Seven more akin to Green. the Wallabies. Leeds did well. Wetton. The ball being kept alive by New Zealand. Here they go again. Overlap. Stone. Crowley's outside. Kerwin. New Zealand still charging ahead. Brewer. Just short. But Australia's defence held and was then rewarded with the series winning try. Trying to work a loop. Australia could score if New Zealand aren't careful. Here they go. Far Jones. Overlap for Campisi. He's there. Australia has won the cup. David Campisi is overjoyed. In 87, New Zealand regained the cup. Last year, they faced a confident Australian team, buoyed by a home series win over England. The All Blacks struck hard, winning the first test easily, but Australia then staged a magnificent comeback in the second at Ballymore to force a 19-all draw. Great try! All Black power reasserted itself in Sydney, and the cup remained in New Zealand hands. Great ball for New Zealand to Fox. Here they go, Schuster, Collard, Kerwin. Australia defending desperately in the early stages. Richard Lowe into Far Jones. Australian forwards caught short here. There's an overlap for New Zealand. Kerwin, Campisi brings him down. Stanley tackled. Grant the man round his hips. Deans sniping. Close. Try. New Zealand's last test loss was in Nantes against the French. And since then, they're unbeaten in 16 internationals, averaging over 40 points per game. Australia, on the other hand, after the series loss to the Lions, go in today as rank underdogs. Timon got it to Campbell. The Australians outsmarting. Far Jones with a long pass here for Maguire. It's Martin. Back it goes to Gouley. 1989 has been a mixed one for Australia, with a smashing first test win against the Lions but narrow losses in the remaining two internationals saw the series Finley slip Cooler. away. Away to Andrew. Can they get it wide here? Long cut out. The pass is OK. Hastings. Hastings is there. And the referee says yes. The powerful Lions pack had the Australian forwards on the back foot, and the need for a more physical approach up front Australian was highlighted. Will the 90. Richards comes away. That's a tight head. Psychological blow there for the Lions pack, and they're very hungry. Jones. Sniping himself, 15 metres out. This is Ackford. Richards there. So too is Calder. Australia under heavy pressure here. 
Across the Tasman, though, in 89, it's been a different story. Kicking nicely up the blind side. Kerwin is pressurising uh, Lazarus Day. Kerwin now. Kerwin clear. Pass to Fitzpatrick is on the deck. Four is Murray Pierce. Shelford plays halfback. Fox. Stanley. Swing it wide. The All Blacks this year have been all-conquering. Twice beating an enterprising French side and then annihilating a lacklustre Argentina. Coming on the All Black side, Shelford, up to Kerwin, Jones, Michael Jones, and Michael Jones does it again. And that's his second for the day. And the All Blacks have scored ten tries. And a tragedy for Michael Jones out with severe knee damage after that game. But uh, with me in commentary, Chris Handy and Gary Pearce, who played in Australia's great win at Eden Park in 1978. We're feeling a bit like the three brass monkeys up here at the moment, but 109 points in two internationals against the Pumas. Is that a suitable preparation for New Zealand, Chris? Good, and I think so. This is a great New Zealand side. They not only win the ball, but they use it very well. And when the opposition have it, they pressure. Australia have got to do three things today and do, do them well. A stable scrum, quality possession from the line out, and above all, maintain the ball in the tackle and win the ball that they're taking into the, uh, to the breakdowns. Uh, they need to do that to win. Gary Pearce. New Zealand have traditionally had problems with the open Australian style of play. That Australian style of play is less predictable and offers the opportunity to move the ball away from those very strong all-black packs. If Australia today can win a fair share of possession and move that ball wide, there's a chance of knocking off the world champions. Well, it really is a wonderful atmosphere here at Eaton Park. The cheerleaders performing at the moment. But despite all the rain we've had yesterday, the ground is in superb condition. That really is a tribute to the ground staff. And 47,000 people here at Eaton Park. The game also being televised live throughout New Zealand and, of course, live throughout Australia on ABC television. Well, the Australian selectors have certainly gambled for this summit clash against the All Blacks. Five changes to the third test side, beaten 19-18 by the Lions, including three new caps. They are teenager Tim Horan at outside centre, and in the front row, prop Tony Daly and hooker Phil Kearns. The two great warriors, Andy McIntyre and Simon Poitovan, are back for one last tilt at the All Blacks, and then they'll slip back into retirement. Australia's hopes revolve around the Twin Towers, Bill Campbell and Steve Cutler in the line-out. Pace and flair in the backs can capitalise on their good deeds. New Zealand side contains, unlike Australia, it's a very settled, well-oiled combination and has only one change for the first time in seven test matches. Flanker Michael Jones damaged those medial and cruciate ligaments and his place taken by Otago captain Mike Brewer. The point-scoring machine Grant Fox is closing on 300 in tests after scoring 72 in the four home internationals this year against France and Argentina. Well, this is now a familiar sight for Australians. And as I mentioned, Gary Pearce and Chris Handy played in that great win in 1978 when Australia won by 30 points to 16. Tony Shaw's Wallabies. Greg Cornelson scored four tries and Gary Pearce scored one. That must have been a thrill, but what about today? Well, it was a tremendous memories from that particular day, but we came into a test then um, as underdogs. We, the series was down, um, they'd won the series, and we came into a game with nothing to lose. And I think Australia is in the exact situation today and really has an opportunity, nothing to lose and everything to gain. Gary, uh, very similar circumstances. Australia were uh, really battered in the second test here in 1978. It is a, uh, a game of rugby. It's nothing else. There's a, a half a point start being offered around just to separate the draw. A lot of doubt here in uh, New Zealand by New Zealand rugby fans over the ability of their very proud All Blacks to win their 17th game in the, on the run. But they look like a good unit and uh, today's where they're really, uh, the chips are down and uh, uh, they'll pull out a big one today, I'm sure. And look at this amazing scene at Eaton Park. The crowd waiting very patiently and expectantly. And incidentally, after our live telecast today, we'll be replaying you highlights of the under-21 international between Australia and New Zealand and some tremendous football in that game. Australia has won four times at Eaton Park. Trevor Allen's side in 1949 got there. Rex Mossop won some very good line-out ball that day. 
and that was the year that New Zealand actually lost two test matches on the same day the other in Durban South Africa and they lost to the Wallabies at Wellington in 1955 Alan Cameron's Wallabies defeated New Zealand in the third test here at Eden Park by eight points to three Garth Jones was the only Queenslander in the side 1978 Tony Shaw side and 1986 Andy Slack's Wallabies coached by Alan Jones recorded that superb victory by 22 points to nine with the defense that day absolutely fantastic I remember Topo Rodriguez's comment it was a matter of life and death we were determined to tackle until we died and who'll forget that tackle Chris Handy by Topo on Hickory it is one of the memorable moments of uh, of my recent uh, rugby career that tackle it not only just was a tackle Gordon it was a uh, uh, they declared war against the All Blacks that day and they said we refuse to take a backward step uh, the 1989 Wallabies have to have a similar attitude. They just don't want to be pushed back. I know there's great feeling in the team. Simon Poitivan has uh, added uh, uh, a new dimension to the preparation of the team for the day, and uh, it's, they're really keen. So hopefully the new young bloods join with that. So a mixed reception, understandably, for the Wallabies. Campisi, the last man out. And the Australians are going to run against this very strong breeze in the first half. And a big moment for Tony Daly, the young prop from the Gordon Club, straight from club football, a baptism of fire against the All Blacks at Eden Park. Very strong young man. He bench pressed 165 kilos. And Shelford leads out the All Blacks. So a very big advantage for New Zealand with this breeze. Grant Fox, who knows the ground so well, it's his home territory, is sure to be posting that ball high. And Nick Barr-Jones, the Australian captain, his 35th test match, now only one behind John Hipple as Australia's most capped halfback. Lloyd Walker there, the much maligned man from the Ramwick Club. Many critics feel that uh, he should have lost his place after the Lions series. There's a big job on his shoulders this afternoon. Number 12 there, John Schuster, who left the field against the Pumas last week. Four home victories for the All Blacks this year, two against France. They certainly received a shock in the first test at Eden Park. And there's AJ, Alan Wetton, and the two towering Eiffels from Australia, Campbell and Cutler. Great scene here, Chris Handy. Well, there's the man in the shot there, Gary Wetton, who's been the... Uh, uh, the real engine room behind the All Blacks uh, forward pack. At two in the line out, he's almost unbeatable and it'll take a great effort from Bill Campbell at two to wrestle ball from uh, uh, from Gary Wetton, particularly crucial ball. They're almost unbeatable in their own 22. the well-known New Zealand personality providing the vocals.
Eden Park erupts and plenty of Australian supporters over here estimated at up to 8,000 as well as this massive TV audience around Australia and also in some of the Pacific Islands and now Shelford to lead the Haka The Australian players refusing to watch their counterparts and Australia with a very big task in this first half running against the gale and uh, it could be anything up to a 15 point breeze. Michael Liner with the kickoff and there's Mike Brewer the new man in the New Zealand side he played in all three test matches against the Wallabies in 1986 appointed Otago captain at the age of 20. Today's referee, the Irishman Stephen Hilditch, an experienced campaigner who is headmaster at Belfast High School. He was in charge of the Wallabies Grand Slam match at Scotland in 1984. The Bledisloe Cup, 1989, underway. And Gary Wetton gets the first touch. Bruce Deans now. And grubbing the ball into touch, Australian territory. Clive Norling, the Welshman on the far side, in charge of the two Puma internationals. He's the touch judge, along with David Bishop from New Zealand. See superb protection there for the for the jumper going up for the ball and Dean's in depth there is able to just push the ball down the sideline. Good advantage for the All Blacks at this early stage. Good throw, Cutler. Pushing there against the Australians. Steve Cutler penalised. And so we've had what? 45 seconds of play and Grand Fox to have a shot for goal. Well, Australia's seen a lot of those penalties go against them this year in, uh, in line-out. We saw it against the Lions that Australia went one out to try and interfere with uh, the jumper of the ball and got pigged. The Lions, on the other hand, I think were, were just over, the to over that, uh, that penalty line, but all did it together and the referees couldn't pick it up. So Grant Fox, this amazing point-scoring machine, now up to 286 points in internationals for New Zealand. And in his last four tests at home this year, 13 and 18 against France and 20 and 21 against the Pumas. That's an average of 18. Grant Fox passing Wayne Smith as the most capped New Zealand fly half of all time here today. 45 metres out. Just missing, left-hand side, Campisi behind the end goal and back for the 22. It's going to be a great effect today, the breeze on the game. New Zealand running with it very strong, whether they kick with the breeze or whether they decide to run with it, uh, that'll be the test. And the ball going into touch, but the referee spotting a knock forward by Jeff Miller. So it's Poitivan and Brewer on this side. Scrum goes down. Schuster. Taken by Walker and Liner. The All Black forwards, here they come. Plenty of leg drive there from New Zealand. Coming out now for McDowell. Back it goes. Overlap here for Wetton. He's very close. Alan Wetton, can they get there? The referee's on the spot. Held up. Very nervous time there for the Australian camp. So close to a New Zealand try. Inside centre, Schuster staying up in the tackle. First man there, Joe Stanley, the outside centre. Keeping the drive going, joined by the forwards. Rolled away by the forwards. Staying on their feet all the time. So here's the big pressure now for this revamped Australian scrum. Can they hold it? Oh, 
Bar Jones has to stay behind the ball. Knock on by Deans, but the referee says Nick Bar Jones was in front of the ball. You have to stay behind it. Chris, how did you see that first Australian scrum? I was surprised. A very stable scrum uh, by Australia. and New Zealand were tending to put the, uh, the push on. They drove the ball across field. Uh, I don't think they'd be terribly happy with the presentation of it. They have a penalty. I think they'd have preferred to have the ball in hand. Quite interesting so far, just beyond that scrum, that uh, the first backline movement by the All Blacks, again, they're, they're the art of being able to keep the ball up off the ground and be able to keep it driving. They drove and drove right into the 22, nearly got to the try line, but they'd committed near two or three um, Australian backs, and it had not passed the ball out, would have easily scored. Australia must put them on the ground if they've got any chance of today. So some clever control at the back by Wayne Shelford, the All Black skipper. Far Jones allowed to follow the ball through, but he must stay behind it. Second penalty attempt for Grand Fox inside the first five minutes of this international. It's hooking. Hit the upright and through. Grand Fox breathing a little more easily. He moves to 290 points in test for New Zealand. So, New Zealand, the proud defenders of the Bledisloe Cup, will the status quo be prevailing here in about 80 minutes? You can no doubt hear the, the breeze onto our microphones. We're perched high above the grandstand. Southern side of the ground. Overcast conditions. Australian body height, just a bit high there. They've marched Australia 10 metres straight through the middle of the Australian Mall. Good delivery now for the backs. Fox charged down by Liner. Good work by him. Here comes Williams. Walker. Tackled by Terry Wright. Tim Horan in there for Australia. And a knock on by the men in goal. These rolling malls by the, by the All Blacks are extremely dangerous. Australians will just have to sacrifice themselves and go down and try and bring that pack down. Right now, they're hanging around the edges, trying to pull people around. There's a player will have to go down, take the legs out. He might catch a few sprigs on the way, but he's going to have to do it for the sake of the side. The high ball from Fox. Greg Martin coming in. He took it so well against the Lions, and he does it well here. Australia regroup and drive New Zealand back this time. Now the Australians trying to ruck it back. And the referee giving the scrum feed to New Zealand. We talked about this earlier. Maintaining the ball and winning possession from the ball taken in. The critical times, even if we have a 50% sharing of possession to Australia, it isn't enough. We must get that ball that they take in each and every, each and every time. Grand Fox coming short side. Deans goes himself. Back in now to Shelford. Here's Alan Wetton, running at the Australian inside backs. Walker was the tackler. New Zealand with numbers here. Schuster, Stanley outside, and so too is Cohen. He's well caught. Schuster picks up brilliantly. Back it goes to Brewer. Loose ball there for the halfback. Scrambly play by New Zealand. Now they have it back under control. Fox goes for the pot, sets himself, and across the face. And there the Australian reserves, Brad Gervin, Dan Crowley in the background, Peter Slattery and Marty Roebuck along with Mark McBain and Tim Gavin. This is Gary Wetton who made his test debut against the Springboks in 1981 at this ground. That was that dramatic flower bomb test where Gary Knight was hit by a flower bomb from an overhead aircraft. Some concern being shown from, uh, for Gary Wetton there. A, uh, an injury to the face, looks like the nose and cheek area. Great concern being shown. He hasn't just uh, grimaced and continued on like he would normally, done, uh, normally have done. It was a very competitive ruck. He took the ball forward, laid it back, 
Australian Wait. forwards got there about the same time as the All Blacks, and I think he's, uh, he's already picked up a spring on the way. So now Michael Lehner with the restart. Australian 22. Eight minutes elapsed in the first half. New Zealand leading by three points to nil. The Australians coming through. Not taken by New Zealand. Daly has it for Australia. Good set up here. Good low body height from the Australians. Liner now. Kicking the ball and finding territory. The ball bouncing around here for Wrights. Martin, 15 from halfway. Back to Liner. Back to Campisi. Taking on Wetton. And they're into touch. But the Australians prepared to try things here. Nothing on that time. No, Australia's power well down that far side of the field, but they're going to have to win a continuity of play. They've just got to win two or three rucks of balls in a row to commit that the All Blacks to points on the field. Move the ball away from them when they get there. Counter-attack like that's good, mainly be able to open up the All Blacks, keep them, keep them apart. Sean Fitzpatrick, he's 21st international. And that's Brewer at the back. Not able to control. Line out win there for Australia. Far Jones grubbering straight to Kerwin and he lost it and regained it. Good win by Australia that time in the line out. Throw to the back using the forwards, uh, the All Black forwards to sweep around, but stolen. They must stand their ground and win more than they uh, uh, than they would normally do down in that area. Far Jones knock on there by Wayne Shelford. It was through very quickly indeed. Well, it's very dangerous here. Once the ball is, uh, leaves the line-out, it leaves the fingers of the player who's gone up for it, the line-out's over. Come through. Shows the eagerness of Shawford and the rest of that uh, all-black back row. So far, the Australian scrum holding up extremely well. The two new caps in the front row. Desperately trying to maintain concentration. Far Jones and Deans. Again, it's a rock-solid Australian scrub. Liner to Walker. Looking now and finding Tyneman. Australians take it over the advantage line. Far Jones in there. New Zealand players there fringing. And the Australians again kicking. Gallagher with the chance to use his 22. Huge kick downfield. And Peasy over his shoulder. Spectacular stuff. Here he goes. The man with the twinkling feet, taking play to within 12 from halfway. Bob Guire, pleased with the Australian counter, but the Australians kicking the ball back to New Zealand, Gary Pearce. Well, it's, I mean, the only way, if New Zealand haven't got the ball, they can't score the tries. So it's really important that Australia keep the ball in the hand and try and play the ball wide. If you can take the ball, keep the ball away from the All Blacks, or when you've got it and they arrive at the situation you'll be able to move it somewhere else they get frustrated and their game plan starts to fall apart well the referee ruling that australia dived over the ball on the ground so another chance for grant fox stephen hilditch telling the australians to stay on their feet australia spoiling there in the tackle alex grizz wiley his nephew richard lowe in the front row for new zealand today He's the only man that can call him Uncle Grizz. So Grant Fox, 10 metre line, Australian Territory. We've had 12 minutes of play in this first half. Fox with just the one successful penalty kick so far. Phil Kearns, reserve grade there on the right last week for Ramwick. Gary Wetton still in the hands of the New Zealand trainer. Very nasty blow on the face for him. This is the man that can break your heart if you're on the opposition side. And he caresses the ball through the uprights for another three-pointer. Two out of three for Grand Fox. New Zealand out by six. And we've had 13 minutes of play first half. 
He's an amazing goal kicker, Gordon. I think when he was at the Cavaliers in South Africa, his, his success rate was something like 80, came at 82%. An amazing record. Well, Chris, there have been some encouraging signs so far from the Australian forwards. Tony Daly's impressed me so far, Gordon, with his sweeping and his drive, his low drive, also his stability in the scrum. Eddie McIntyre's got a good handful against uh, to, with Steve McDowell against him. Campbell flicked the ball back to Miller, but New Zealand have sent Australia back in the tackle. Fox on his left foot. Ian Williams racing back for it. Good skills from him. Nothing on here for Australia. Williams now, chancing his arm across field. Oh, he's taken high, nearly had his head taken from his shoulders. Referee says play on. Now it's Steve Tyneman. Campisi gets around Kerwin. Here they go, Australia. Nick Farr Jones, the try's on here. Campisi's there. Campisi! Great try! Tries in his first two tests against New Zealand back in 82. And that is number 33 in tests for David Campisi. What a start to the test. Here we had heaps of Australian players backing up there, but it was really the experience of Far Jones and Campisi that really made the try. Nothing, nothing to start this. Ian Williams brought the ball back centre field, and it was the creative work from Nick Far Jones. Simple, straightforward stuff. He saw Campisi inside covered. He pushed the ball ahead to keep it under control, and they were just out, able to outdistance Schuster. Good, sensible play. Keeps the ball up the line. Didn't know Hail Mary passes back inside. There, just on the toe, Campisi. Good skills. Over. Well, David Campisi, much maligned after the Lions series. Showed glimpses of his best form against the Anzacs. And not often that someone steps around John Kerwin. Certainly John Kerwin <laughs> stepped around David Campisi plenty of times last year. Liners conversion attempts is there scores are level 15 minutes gone first half at eden park just what australia needed early in the game parity with the all blacks they're running into an extremely strong breeze it's very difficult conditions the field looks wonderful on picture but uh, the conditions are uh, very testing so the australians very keen to run the ball at the all blacks in this first half Australia, the only try of the game. And there's plenty of composure in the Australian team. New Zealand still looking very concerned for Gary Wetton. And Michael Liner. Campbell coming through with Tyneman. New Zealand tall timber went out. Alan Wetton there. Australia driving low. The most important part about that last try, that it was a, it was a mini ball, or well, mini ruck that won the ball. By the time that the All Black forwards had got to the play, the ball had actually gone and gone blind. And that's the formula for success. Mini rucks and mini balls. New Zealand pushing before the ball went in. Yes, the other point there, the referee must have been unsighted with that high tackle on Ian Williams, so play continued. Andy McIntyre, Steve McDowell. McIntyre goes in across on the All Black hook of Fitzpatrick. McDowell driving in at his ribs and trying to push the Wallaby scrum across field. Liners torpedo kick, finding touch 10 metres from halfway. New Zealand just budging the Australian scrum initially, but then they dug their toes in. So it's all locked up at 6 all, 17 minutes gone in the first half. Very exciting match so far. Lovely throw by Fitzpatrick. Zinzan Brook is warming up on the sideline. Scrum feed here for the Australians. And that certainly will disrupt things for New Zealand. Gary Wetton uh, apparently is in some real trouble here. And the referee saying Australia pulling the scrum down. They were moved by the New Zealand eight. And 
Fox now coming up to have a shot for goal. I don't think the problem is on the loose head and at the hooker, Andy McIntyre. He's really struggling with Steve McDowell on this side. Fraction high, McDowell driving in and across and thus dislodging the hooker, Cairns. Uh, and that, uh, that backward movement, very difficult to stop in Australia that time, uh, uh, collapsing over the top of the ball to stop it being won by the All Blacks. Very strong scrummage of McDowell, Chris. We saw in the Anzac game that uh, against the Lions, his inclusion in the Anzac pack was, uh, was, was, was really very, very, very good. So now it's Grant Fox. He learned his goal-kicking skills on his father's kiwi fruit farm at Tupuki between two old telegraph poles. Can he find these two white poles here at Eden Park? Forty-six metres out. This to put New Zealand in the lead. Nineteen minutes first half. Hooking across. Not easy from that side with the breeze straight over your shoulder. Scores remain at six all. There have been some uh, concern shown during the week here in New Zealand about the slow start by the All Blacks in their matches and uh, uh, surely here uh, there's only been a couple of flashes where they've been able to keep continuity and the ball up in the hands as they would want. New Zealand not controlling that ball well from the kickoff, but now they have it in the mall. Point of it in there, ripping it away for Australia. New Zealand drive in and get the scrum feed. Well, the New Zealand forwards has won that time as they went low and forced Australia backwards perfect example there you see when the New Zealanders get the ball they're rolling around the edges Australia having problem putting in the deck but once an Australian gets in there they push it forward to a ruck situation to get the foot in here goes Kerwin and Campisi Campisi goes low and Miller comes in for the ball and all tackle Kerwin and Campisi both played the offseason in Italy and both very slow to find their form back on home territory Bill Kearns, Australian under-21 captain last year. Good ball for New Zealand on the Australian throw. Nine outs two apiece. It's Patrick and Wetton. Lovely delivery here. Fox cut out now to Stanley. Lovely flick to Schuster. Only the fullback to beat. And there's the try to Gallagher. Oh, beautiful try. Silken passing skills from the New Zealand midfield. And John Gallagher scores his 12th try in internationals for the All Blacks. Well, this is a class act, this try. This pass, even, uh, it was difficult to pick up watching it directly. You knew the loop was on, but where was the ball going to come from? Stanley did the complete deception, completely deceived the Australian backs, and just flipped the ball inside to Gallagher. Great try. You can see here, Schuster only knows one way, and that's straight up the middle of the field. But what tremendous backing up by Gallagher here. He didn't wait really, really for any pop passes all over the top. He came in depth right from behind, had the option over. Grand Fox, point blank range, and New Zealand back out to their six point lead. One try apiece. And what a game this man's been for New Zealand rugby. Formerly with London Irish. And now one of the great running fullbacks of all time. This is uh, super football, this here. Not only do you give the flick pass, but you convince your opposite number that uh, you're going to take it on yourself. Stanley did it well. Schuster was great in support. Gallagher has added a new dimension to uh, all black backline play. Uh, coming in outside the uh, centres and in between the centres. The great try. Here's Grand Fox on his left boot. Ian Williams underneath. He's under pressure here. He took his first high ball well. He does it again. And the safe option, 10 metres from halfway. Very good skills from Ian Williams. Final both, rounder. Both wingers have handled that high ball, put to them extremely well. And that time, uh, Williams taking the good option, not getting trapped with all his forwards in front of him. Just going up the line and will stop there and start again with the line out. Another good line out ball for New Zealand. Here's Johnny the Shoe. 
taken by Liner head on. Foyt Evans there. New Zealand again has the drive, but they lose it. Far Jones. Far Jones racing for the ball. Still in play. And Gallagher saves the day just 12 metres out. New Zealand took it in, Australia came out, and great individual effort there by the Australian captain. The wire, I'm sure, would be happy with the way that he's, uh, uh, that his pack are working away at that ball. Schuster in back play is, uh, uh, is still not back on side. Australia desperately need this line out. Cutler goes high. Now it's Daly. And not in straight. John Schuster, who's left the field twice against the Pumas in the two internationals. He has a sore hip and a hamstring problem. So now it's back with Fox. A hurried left foot kick. Finding the touch. David Bishop, the touch judge on this side. New Zealand by 12 points to six. 24 minutes gone, first half. Philip Kearns, a difficult task during the week to get used to the uh, the jumpers and also now with this, uh, with this howling breeze around trying to be able to put the ball right on the spot. Well, that one didn't look to be very straight. New Zealand come away. Referee plays advantage. Campisi racing back for it. And these are the two that uh, figured in that try for the Lions in the third test. But there's nothing fancy there. Midway 22 and halfway. Greg Martin, the sure-footed man from the University of Queensland who really dazzled in his test debut. We've seen very little of the ball so far, Greg Martin. The ball's being worked wide by the All Blacks, not deep. Liner tackles Stanley. The Australian backs up very slowly that time. They were caught napping. Now New Zealand had the number, Schuster and Kerwin. Campisi comes and holds him. Good defence by Campisi, sweating on his opposite number. But the Australian backs caught asleep there. Well, one of the plans certainly was uh, for the All Blacks prior to this game was to let Kerwin try and run over the top of David Campisi. And every time that's been questioned, David Campisi's up there to really put him away. Good ball for Far Jones. And low trajectory kick from Michael Liner against this very stiff Nor'easter taking play outside the 22. Australia, though, are getting quality possession at the moment. They're winning a little bit of the all-black ball centre field. Their scrum ball is coming uh, reasonably well, and the line-outs uh, have improved. Very deep alignment here from the New Zealand backs, and they have the ball here. Wetton goes back to McDowell. Time in the tackler, just outside the 22. Cutler tried to pick it up. Now it's Fox. Fox over the top. Back it goes for Williams, and no danger here for Australia as they force the ball down. Australia trying to keep New Zealand scoreless for as long as possible in this first half, knowing they have this very stiff breeze second term. One try apiece, Campisi and Gallagher. Both tries converted, Fox has kicked two penalties. Liner's kick just a bit too deep that time. Wetton unopposed. Good platform here for New Zealand. Fox and Schuster. Here comes Gallagher out wide. Bad pass knocked on there by Wright. And we're just six metres from halfway Australian territory. Good opportunity to look at both scrums uh, from this play. John Schuster certainly seems to be favouring that right leg. Not a good pass from him. See how Steve McDowell drives in and across the front of Andy McIntyre. The ball's still not in. The referee, I'm sure, will be uh, keen to make sure New Zealand don't put on the push, but also Australia must stay square. Australia almost lose it. Picked up by Wetton. Supported by Shelford. Now it's Fox looking for space. Brewer, 10 metre line, Australian Territory. Dean's in for the ball to Shelford. Shelford into liner. He took him well. Australia get back to their feet. Point of it's there. It's out of the ruck. Play on, says the referee, and a good tackle. Now McDowell goes in. Australia come away with it. This is Cutler and Williams. Kicking too far. Not often you see 
six foot eight Steve Cutler playing at five eight. Australian forwards work very hard for that morsel of ball, but uh, just the uh, the impatience of it all, trying to work it wide, and uh, they haven't gained a metre. Well, the Australians have certainly done their homework in the forwards. The ball was out of the ruck, and they went in there to pick it up off the deck. 25 metres out. New Zealand leading by six. Tall timber wins it for Australia. Far Jones looking for support from his forwards here. No halfback liner goes in. Here it comes. New Zealand forwards or inside backs up offside. And that's a great kick by Martin. And the referee now awards the penalty, playing the advantage. Two or three men there caught by the Australians offside at the ruck. And a relieving kick for the Australians. Very smart balk there by Michael, uh, Michael Liner. Having uh, watching, probably, probably watched it quite a few times from Nick Far Jones' drove. He thought he'd never go himself. Yes, well, his father, Ian, leading Brisbane sports psychologist, has had a few words with some of the Australian team members. He also did a grand job with the ACT team to G them up for their match against the All Blacks. Against the Lions, I should say. There's young Tony Daly at the front, relishing his task so far. Campbell at the front does well, and Kearns the hooker, 105 kilos. Takes it ahead for Australia, but Fitzpatrick pulls him back. Comes out for New Zealand. Australia took it in and lost it. Fox, good support here from Brewer. Now it's Alan Wetton. McDowell clears cleverly. Schuster, Stanley, Kerwin comes inside. Australia sweat on him. Horan the tackler there. The Australians arriving in numbers, and the penalty goes the gold way. Good work Collapsing from... them all, says the referee. Good work from Tim Horan that time. Saw Kerwin coming back obliquely and uh, drifted off Stanley to be able to be the first uh, uh, man to tackle. I must say the defence by Walker and Horan has been very good so far. They've been moving up into the centres, knocking them down on their side of the advantage line. Well, some clever play there by Far Jones, catching the All Blacks napping, tapped the ball, kicked for touch, and has found it 10 metres out. Nine minutes remaining before the break, just six points in it. Referee calling for a clear tunnel. Sean Fitzpatrick, son of the All Black Brian, who was a fly half. Gary Wetton, two-handed take at the front. Brewer comes in, knocking one of the Australians out of the way, and Fox now gets ground. Not finding his touch. This is Martin. He follows. Now runs the Australians onside, and Gallagher, well caught by Martin. Who wants the ball? Deans goes in. And Grant Fox now sets his sights down the touchline. 12 from halfway. All Blacks losing composure right now. They really haven't got depth in their play. But coming in behind and being able to push over that advantage line. Australia getting, getting the, the uh, All Blacks to the deck and being able to disrupt their rhythm. Tyneman second from the back, going his way. But Alan Witten got it. Miller there for Australia on the ground. And the referee not happy. And the referee awarding a penalty here. Looks as though there's been some playing of the ball on the ground. And is this within range for Liner? Against the very strong breeze, just over 40 out. He's going to have a shot. I think you'll find this is, uh, this is Gary Wetton coming from the back here, from this thing, taking out a play without the ball. Wetton number five going across the line, not in uh, chase of the ball, but simply to uh, knock a player out of the way, I think the way it's went. So Michael Liner now. 421 points in international football. Hugo Porter had 423 in internationals for Argentina. Low kick. 
But pushed wide, and Terry White in goal. Just really trying to really drive that one low against the breeze and didn't strike it as fluently as he would have liked. 12 points to six. Seven minutes before half time. One try apiece. And this is Martin. Taking no risks here as Wright comes through. He's a big punter of the ball. So long in the shadow of Roger Gould has taken play back to halfway. Well, as these minutes tick away, uh, we found that the All Blacks haven't really in intelligently used this ball. They haven't really put the pressure down on the Australian team in the 22. Lining up right on halfway. Ball thrown in, halfway line. Poitavan got that one. Far Jones now. Kearns. At the ball going into touch, says David Bishop. They're not getting it their own way in the lineouts. Uh, the All Blacks Australia are working well. Tony Daly at number one is really contesting with Steve McDowell and trying to knock off a bit of ball that's going to the front to Wetton. Up the back for Brewer and Miller comes in but snatched away by Wetton. Alan Wetton. Looks as though there's been some playing of the ball on the ground again by New Zealand. Poitavan has it quickly. And back there, says referee Hilditch. Poitavan was looking for the quick one. So it looks as though Wetton was on the ground and not releasing the ball, which you must do immediately. Well, the All Black players taking the ball up are certainly turning and laying it back, but the, the support of their pack has been too shallow. They haven't really got themselves back into a deep position. New Zealand leading Australia by 12 points to 6-5 before the break. Very impressive performance by the Australians' first half. Very good defence by the backs, apart from that one blemish, which led to New Zealand's try. Good jump there by Murray Pearce, and this is Fox. And he's taken play to within eight metres of halfway. Well, Australia can't afford to lose their own line-out ball. Bit of wrestling occurring at the back of the line out there between Brewer and Miller. Really, with a tap ball like that, Miller should have been able to get a lot more pressure on Fox, but he was interfered with on the way through. Pushing out against New Zealand. It really is a, a bun fight in those lineouts, but the referee doing his best to control proceedings. Four minutes before half time. Liner looking for touch. Has he got the touch line? No, it's gone touch in goal. So back to the 22. Let off for New Zealand. That really was a, a grand opportunity there for the Australians to apply pressure just before half time. Now it's Liner on halfway. And that's a very astute kick by Liner, finding open space, but the bounce doesn't go his way. Looks as though it was going straight towards the touchline. And that's John Gallagher in the last line. Australia desperately wants to hold on. Keeping New Zealand scoreless. To trail by six at half time. One try apiece. Fox with the two penalties, the difference. Long kick to Campisi. What's Campo going to do? Lovely step. He leaves right standing. He follows now. This is dangerous. Clash of bodies. And the referee rules knock on by Bruce Deans. Good play there by Campisi. It's really a great opportunity for Australia now to really come forward and get some points. The All Blacks are, are having trouble getting, picking the pace of the game up. They really are going to sleep. Australia just gets a little bit of ball, gets some continuity of second phase, and I'm sure they can get the try before half time. Good ball here for Timon and Far Jones. High ball, it's holding in the breeze, but just a little too far. And Gallagher there for the mark. He was stationary, both feet on the ground. Called the ball as it hit his chest. A little bit higher was the necessity there with that kick. Two minutes before half time.
John Gallagher was the London cross country champion at the age of 11 years and he takes play up to the halfway line quick line out played on here's Ian Williams right doesn't put him to ground Williams goes again now tries to set up Pierce there in defense Australia have it just uh, two minutes before half time Poitavan goes again coming back Australia's way no knock on says the referee back to Tyneman liner chipping into space well again uh, perhaps Australia should have held on to the ball Campisi back there near his goal line very slowly and he's going to kick the touch here and that's a big kick too New Zealand take the quick line out play on says the referee and Kerwin in space Kerns the hooker there can't put him to ground Kerwin still going up to the 22 now it's Fitzpatrick Pierce couldn't get it to ground New Zealand have knocked on well that was a let off for Australia it's the moment that pr the pressure is taken off people relax the moment when the All Blacks are most dangerous good counter-attack but equally good defense from Australia need, need to hang on here in these uh, closing minutes of the first half they've done marvelously well to uh, get some stability and there'll be some great confidence in the team toe to head here by the Australians now it's Kerwin he gets away from the tackles he's still going off Cutler's leg play on says the referee and it was off the torso there of Cutler John Kerwin Kerwin saying what about the knock-on but Cutler's hands weren't near the ball a tight head scrum win to New Zealand that time good drive Steve McDowell operating extremely uh, uh, effectively from loose head on Andy McIntyre Australia here must try and win this line out and move the ball across field. Last time they had the ball, they ran in around the rucks and walls and didn't really tie the ball up and didn't give any opportunity for their backs to, to, uh, to know when the ball was coming or to set any movements up. The ball straight up to midfield. Beautifully taken by Horan. He's on the halfway line now and he's very strong, this young man. He goes over the halfway. And Australia has the scrum feed. The referee blows it up for half time. So Australia in this match right up to their next. 12 points to six against a very strong breeze in the first half. And I'd imagine Gary Pearce and Chris Handy that plenty of encouragement there for the Australians because they really have taken the game to New Zealand in that first term. Well, they've done well, Gordon, because they've been able to break up that pattern that New Zealand have been able to establish. But this is a great side, this all-black side. We've seen as a, uh, a combination they're able to lead or they're able to come from behind. They've now got the wind in their face, and uh, uh, I think they'll uh, put their heads to the task. But Australia would be very encouraged by their performance early. The early nerves have settled in the uh, new young players, and uh, particularly Tony Daly going very well. So uh, I think they're going uh, uh, on target at the moment. So we saw two tries in the first half as the Australian players now in their huddle. Ian Williams, number 14, has taken some very good high balls. Cutler and Campbell have been rock hard in the second row winning some very good line out ball so it's been uh, well an exciting first half and uh, I think we're all sitting on the edges of our seats uh, no doubt you are at home but it's 12 points to six New Zealand's way and that is a very big breeze in the first half and really uh, before we do talk to the boys let's have a look at the try scored by David Campisi from him. nothing on here for Australia Williams now, chancing his arm, across field. Oh, he's taken high, nearly had his head taken from his shoulders. Referee says play on. Now it's Steve Tyneman. Campisi gets around Kerwin. Here they go, Australia. Nick Far jones the try's on here. Campisi's there. Campisi! Great try! Well, yes, that really was tremendous innovation by Far jones and Campisi, two of the most experienced players, and that was a body blow for New Zealand certainly was. I think Australia's got a, got a tremendous opportunity to be able to win this match. The, the All Blacks seem to be asleep in this first half. They haven't got their depth of power be, in their play. They're not coming in depth and driving over. They had the wind. They didn't do very much with it. Now they're in a, a situation where Australia's only six points off them. Australia's got the wind behind them and all the enthusiasm to win. Chris? Australia have got to do some fine tuning to their game, Gordon, particularly in set play. The scrum, Andy McIntyre has got a nail down Steve McDowell to the ground. 
He's not doing it at the moment. They've got to be a little tidier in their line out and be able to get into those all black rucks and to get some of the, that possession. It's looking good, but uh, it's still a long way to go. Yes, well, uh, New Zealand also scored their try, and that uh, certainly gave them the six point cushion at half time. So there it is. Uh, three points to six. Patrick and Wetton. Lovely delivery here. Fox. Cut out now to Stanley. Lovely flick to Schuster. Only the fullback to beat. And there's the try to Gallagher. Oh, beautiful try. So play just about to commence here. The two touch judges, David Bishop and Clive Norling, out there with Stephen Hilditch. And uh, Stephen Hilditch, uh, the Irishman, has been a bit of a good luck charm for the Australians. They saw him at the south of Scotland at Hoyk last year on the Wallaby Tour of Britain. And the Australians scoring a very good win that day. In fact, David Campisi almost won the game single-handed before leaving the field after 30 minutes. What's important here for Australia is that they've got to play the ball down into the All Blacks 22 and then move the ball wide through mini, mucks and, mini rucks and mini walls. Keep the ball away from the All Blacks. So Stephen Hilditch just checking with the captain Nick Far jones and he says we'll have it now the second half of the Bledisloe Cup 1989 underway here at Eden Park and it's immediately Sean Fitzpatrick with the deflection from Wetton this is Mike Brewer tackled well by Poitavan who rolls him over in the shoulder now it's Steve McDowell oh great charge here from the All Blacks there's a good line here they have numbers Schuster straightens he gets through the tackle of Far jones Good protection from New Zealand. Out on the left is Terry Wright. This is Gallagher. But Martin's in good position. Right foot. Not his favoured foot. And he finds the touchline. Well, it's rather obvious that New Zealand have been told to pick up the pace by Alec Wiley. They started to get the drive forward, but they still look a little lost when the uh, ball comes free. Australia well spread across the field and were able to defend uh, uh, well. inside the Australian 22. It's a long one up the back. Miller took it brilliantly. Pushing out there by the Australians. Mike Brewer. The man who was on the receiving end. And New Zealand now with a, a chance to go further ahead. Critical what? points here in the lineout. Called pushing out of the lineout. Mike Brewer. Well, you can see the game plan there. You can see that the ball's come to the back of the line out because the All Blacks want to tie up the Australian back row. Because Australian back row is getting into their inside backs, starting to tackle them, not making them able to get to advantage line, thus, having, thus not getting the momentum for the rest of their pack to get onto the ball. So their game plan is to tie up the Australian back row and try and get that push over the advantage line. Joe Stanley just speaking with Bernie McCarhill there. Joe Stanley uh, playing his 23rd straight test. Invariably goes down injured in a game. Great campaigner for the All Blacks. For this to go out by nine. Grant Fox looking for his third penalty goal. 15 points to six. Good kick there by Grant Fox. And that's a telling blow just after the start of the second half. Nine-point lead for New Zealand. Yes, you saw a lot more urgency from the all-black forwards at the start of that second period. Liner kicking deep. And play back now to the 22. Bernie McCarhill warming up for the all-blacks, the Aucklander. He's been a replacement in four of his internationals so far. So Grant Fox now looking for his forwards to get underneath this ball, aiming for it to hold up in the breeze. Very strong one here. Australia must start to get possession from these kickoffs in 22 metres if they're to continue any uh, meaningful attack. Knock on, knock on by Australia. Difficult right throughout the uh, Lions series at home. Uh, the kickoffs in 22s have been a little unconvincing in getting possession there. 
going to see a lot of running from the New Zealand backs against this breeze in the second half. Good chance to see Tony Daly working very strongly on the loose head side. Here's Grant Fox kicking that one deep and back towards the touchline. Nasty bounce here for Martin, but he can ram it back. And good follow through. Good pressure there from Terry Wright. Terry Wright has scored six tries for New Zealand in the four test matches this year. Territorial advantage so far, though, for the All Blacks in this second half. Lineouts nine all uh, at the moment. Good contest there. Come on. Miller and Brewer at the back, the two number sevens. Pierce going high and winning the ball one-handed. Schuster now. Back it goes to Stanley. Great tackle by Horan. Very low. And that one really hurt Stanley too. Australia trying to spoil. Fitzpatrick picks up. Poitavans there. Ball slipping out here for New Zealand. Here it comes. Low to Deans. And now it's Fox. Stanley. Cut out now to Kerwin. Gallagher's outside. Good tackle low by, well, he's holding on, Walker. The ball slipped away, 22-metre line. Deans to Fox. Now it's Stanley straightening up. He got through the tackle of McIntyre. Look at the line for New Zealand here. Pierce, he held on. Australia in desperate straits. There's a good line out here for New Zealand. Up they come. And the scrum just five metres out with the New Zealand feed. Joe Stanley that time seeing the gap uh, that had opened between the outside backs and also the uh, the forwards straightened up play. It was a uh, beautiful punch by him through the middle to start that attack. So this is New Zealand's big chance. Good scrum ball. They try to move the Australian eight. They're holding very well. Now it's Shelford. Shelford almost there. Five metres out. Deans goes for the line. Two metres out. That's Richard Lowe, number three. Playing the ball on the ground on his knees. Now he gets up. Poitavan can see it. New Zealand trying to go straight through, but Poitavan spoiling things. Lowe's on the ground. Poitavan's got to get away from it. And New Zealand have been penalised. And you can see there, Richard Lowe was on his knees, playing the ball in the ruck. You can't do that. Number three, you've got to be on your feet. Well, examples there of New Zealand really overplaying that rolling ball too much. They had opportunity to move the ball wide, but they kept it in tight. There was also a bit of stomping of the man too. And Liner has really put in a colossal kick here. Down towards the 22, New Zealand to run it back here. John Cohen, St. John as they call him here at Eden Park. Campisi's first up there. Campisi comes and drives him back. Halfway line. Well, he stuck to him like a human fly, David Campisi today. Well balanced. Lines up Cohen and uh, it's three or four occasions that he's been able to drive him into touch and not allow him to get the pass away to support. Good concentration. Wayne Shelford now down for New Zealand. Shelford, one of the oldest players out on the field at 31. He's played in the second division in France during the off-season for Toek. And he made his debut for the All Blacks in Toulouse in 1986. Well, Bob Dyer, coach of the Australian team in New Zealand in 1982, they pulled off that wonderful victory at Wellington, but then lost by 33 points to 18 here at Eden Park in 82. Big test for the Australian selectors today as well. Bob Dwyer and Bob Templeton and John Bain. They've picked a side which has uh, uh, got some strange combinations in there, playing with great heart here today. But France looms uh, close by. A uh, great uh, uh, look at chances here. M M McIntyre and Cutler and a lot of others unavailable for that French tour. So here we go, the stomping on the... Uh, the back the ball was somewhere near there uh, it was the backward movement of the boot but referee right onto it well the line out closed up Cairns the young man does well good skills from Philip Kearns as well down over the ball back up to his feet referee again calling for the gap 35 metres out from the Australian goal line. 
New Zealand looking a lot more hungry in the second half. Fitzpatrick, Cutler two-hander. Kearns does well. This is the number two for Australia. Back to Miller. He shrugs off and finds Poitavan. Good setup here by the Australians. Quick ball wanted. This is Kearns charging ahead. The young Turk. Now it's Liner. Liner looking for the far touch line. Spiral torpedo. He's got the bounce. And he got the touch too. Ten metres out. Good constructive play. Really punching up hard that time, laying the ball back, making it available for Nick Farr-Jones without anyone about him. He's able to clear well. Well, what an inspiring performance too from the young hooker, the reserve grader. He'll probably be back in reserve grade next week for Ramwick. Eddie Jones is the number one hooker there. It's 10 metres out. Brewer at the back. Australia not winning their line-out ball. Kick also not finding touch. This is Martin, field goal attempt, but the referee's whistle is gone. And it was an, a throw that wasn't in straight in the line-out from Kearns that was the problem. The referee played advantage, it didn't accrue. They are struggling in that area, Australia, with the throw-ins to the line-out. Getting some uh, degree of variation. Low, flat and hard. Tony Daly certainly scrumming his heart out against Richard Lowe very experienced man from Waikato but we're on the 22 metre line New Zealand leading by 15 points to 6 and 30 minutes remaining in this international all the Australian players very keen now to get some more points it's Cutler at the back to Far Jones but again the delivery is not very tidy Campbell trying to slip it back McIntyre's there New Zealand edge ahead that's Bill Campbell there. And it looks as though the Blacks had the scrum feed. They were just a bit too constructive there for the Australians. Australia trying to wrestle the ball back, but it was too high for them. New Zealand getting down low. Gary Pearce, 15 metres from halfway. 30 minutes remaining. How do you see it? Well, again, you've got, um, you've got the All Blacks trying to get back into the rhythm of the game, but they're getting knocked down by the, by the uh, Australian back row. They really haven't got any rhythm yet. Australia still needs to get that bit of ball, but they still look a bit directionless at the times when they've got it. They've got to hold the ball in their hand. Fox Correct. is doing a lot of kicking and applying pressure now. As Schuster comes through and right on Martin. He lost ahead. New Zealand's chance. Martin picks up. Knock on there by Greg Martin, the big fullback. As Schuster and Terry Wright came through. Greg, you've got to hold on to those ones. New Zealand looks as though they could work something on a big short side here. Gallagher's come up with Terry Wright. Good New Zealand scrum. Schuster has gone to the left now. Here's Gallagher, man on man. He gets through Martin's tackle. Now it's Witten and Shelford, just short of the 22. Here they go again, working it open side Schuster. Stanley. Stanley gets away from Walker and Liner. He's beaten three tackles. Walker comes again to bring him down. Dean's in for the ball. Look at the line here in New Zealand. It was a bad pass. Play on, says the referee. Fox is caught. And driven back here by the Australians. Well, a try went begging there for New Zealand. And now the penalty is awarded. going over the top and playing the ball on the ground says the referee and McIntyre and Tyneman the last two men out pretty hard decision there because the Australians were really swarming and tackling and the ball was going they were going forward at some stage something had to give and it looked as though a New Zealand player had half tripped and the and uh, Australian players went over mainly due to their momentum rather than trying to kill the ball perhaps Australia may have been a bit lucky though because there was a little bit of offside play earlier on what's really shown in this game is that um that Shelford's play I think has deteriorated since he uh, since he's gone across to to France he, he's got he plays a game a lot more shallow now and he we saw that quick pass that came out there he was too shallow and the ball went behind him 
Zealand really playing their best football now against this strong breeze, just as Australia did in the first half, although they trailed by six at the break. This is going to put New Zealand out to a very handy lead. 12 points is, if successful. And this is going to be very close, but missing. No, it's not. The two touch judges combined very well there. David Bishop held, then looked back it to communicate with Clive Norling, who'd moved across to that near upright. And in concert, they said, yes, it was over. It snuck inside. So Grant Fox now bringing up 300 points in Test Match Football for New Zealand. Low trajectory. And Fox off the side of his boot. But Australia trailing by 12. Four-man line-out by the Australians. Campbell and Cutler. Two men at the front. Line-out shading Australia's uh, way 12-11 at this stage. But Ruck and Maul still going firmly in the All Blacks' favour. Here's Lloyd Walker out of Poitaman, charging ahead at Shelford, his arts rival. Set it up beautifully for Tyneman. Australia with a promising build-up here. Now it's Campbell. 15 metres out. Australia want the continuity. The, different, the difference between the both teams gone down. at that stage is, uh, is just that the All Blacks are able to stay on their feet when they uh, carry the ball in possession. And that three times there, firstly, Poitavan, Tyneman, then Campbell, going to ground, making it more difficult. Can Australia put something together here? So New Zealand just reorganising their scrum. Well, we've seen Australia lose a couple of tight heads in attacking situations against the Lions. But this scrum looks very strong indeed in the front row. And it's another good one for Australia. Tony Daly doing very well. Now they Strong shut New man. Zealand. They can move them a few centimetres. Far Jones now, liner. Here's Tim Horan, the young man bursting out of tackles. Sets up well. New Zealand player on the ground there playing the ball. The referee didn't see it. Still comes Australia's way. Kearns the hooker. Back it goes to Far Jones. He threw the big dummy. Australia, 10 metres out. Far Jones calling for it. New Zealand holding on here. And the penalty right in front of the goalposts. Well, Australia really had New Zealand threats there. You could see it, the goal line. And Liner from right in front. They needed that pick ball up three to come points. back that time, didn't they, Gordon? It, uh, it was there. Cam uh, Cutler got rolled over when he went to ground rather, uh, rather meekly. And uh, he just couldn't get that flow. Well, interesting there, Australia picking up the pace of the game. They've been moving it around the edges, driving hard. Okay, they're not staying on their feet, but they're actually driving that extra metre and trying to clean out over the top for the next bloke running onto it. It's frustrating the All Blacks because they, 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 whenever they go to that impact point, the ball's not there. Tim Horan showing very good leg drive, good strength, very strong in the thighs to burst his way through tackles. Liner from right in front, scores the three points. We're back to a nine-point difference. 23 minutes remaining in this international. Nail-biting stuff. 18-9 for New Zealand. Tries to Campisi and Gallagher, New Zealand. Grant Fox with the penalty goals. Has that nine-point lead his side's way. Australia must use this mini-ruck situation to pick up the pace of the game. And that's then that the, 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 we find that the All Blacks wanting when they can't get to the ball, the ball's moved away from and moved wide. New Zealand very good at these kickouts. Nice high ball. Well contested. Far Jones can see it. Now it's Liner. And he's really hammered that one downfield. 
Francis Gallagher going to run it back. He beats Horan easily. Walker comes. Now it's Brewer. Great counter here. Brewer lost ahead. Here's Tim Horan. And just putting the ball into touch. But the referee pulling it back for the knock forward by Brewer. Australians just needing a few more chases that time to put pressure on. Scrum holds well. Liner hoists. And this one outside the 22. Campese and Kerwin. He's found a gap. Tyneman the tackler. Little knock on there by Pierce. And the referee pulls it up. So mistakes coming from New Zealand. Australia coming right back into the game over this last five minutes. 18-9. 21 minutes remaining. New Zealand, though, in front, as they've been from the outset. Australia must put more pressure on those kicks when they do go up. We saw the ball come through. David Campisi really didn't put the power on to get there and put Gallagher on the ground. Martin's come in on the short side. This is Steve Tyneman. Australia trying to drive it in. Liner. Kicking now for Williams. He wants the bounce, but the ball beats him over the touchline. Just 18 metres out. Seen Liner pushing the ball ahead uh, most of the second half. There hasn't been a backline move pulled in close. It'd be interesting to see Campisi and also Williams used uh, in and around the centres. Maybe that, uh, uh, that lack of experience there at uh, outside centres making Michael Liner create more play himself. I'd really like to see Martin out wide to a cutout pass to him and really make Stanley try and stretch himself to get out to get that extra man. Well, again, Gary Wetton commanding at the front of the line out. Good two-handed take. There's not a lot of ground gained, though, by New Zealand. They find themselves 26 metres out from the goal line. But a fairly hushed crowd here at Eden Park. The All Blacks really being pressed here for the first time in several test matches France got to within a point of them and actually hit the lead in their two test matches and it's Liner here's Walker again good pass to Horan and lovely hands this is now Williams and the referee says the pass went forward if Martin's to hit the line he's got to hit it at a different angle and a different pace at that stage the ball came across and he was running at exactly the same angle as everybody else thus easy to read there were some lovely quick hands there from the Australian backs. The final pass just going astray. Scrum wheeling, 90 degrees. You can see the true value here of the back row, the breakaway especially, keeping the weight in on the props. props uh, back Bruce there. Deans. Just chipping up. Kerwin comes in. Time in there and Martin. Good combination. Oh, that's a loose pass. Lost ahead by Alan Wetton. This is Poitman. Right on halfway. Cutler in there for the more ball. Kearns is there too. And Australia with the scrum feed. Back for the knock on. 18 points to nine. We're in the final quarter of the game now. 19 minutes remaining. Another good deep channel ball for the Australians. Deans, he was offside. The referee plays advantage. This one holding up nicely, tantalisingly near the 22. This is Horan. Great tackle. Now it's Stanley Court. New Zealand in bother here. They have to release. And it's a penalty for not releasing. Joe Stanley, the man on the ground. And there was a big hit there by young Tim Horan. Good attack by Horan, but it shouldn't have only been one. There should have been a couple coming forward for that uh, that kick by Lana. Stanley taking the ball to ground and uh, just not releasing immediately, as the law says. So he goes to ground, he tries to protect. He's out on his own, he places it there as he's allowed to do. He just keeps his hand over the top and keeps the control there as the Australian forwards arrive. Gary Pearce, some very hungry Australian back rows here, there at the breakdown. Certainly were. As Horan came through and put him to deck, it was able to put the ball on side, and they got there very fast. But as Chris said, it's more than just Horan's job to come through there. That kick there is really for David Campisi to come through from the blind side, and David's got to play to get more into the game. 17 minutes to go. 
This to reduce the leeway. 2-6. Lovely strike of the ball. It's there. Well, Liner says that kicking goals is the same as chipping with your 9-9. Nine -nine. And that one was landed right in the middle of the green. Six points the difference. Nervous time for the New Zealand crowd here as Australia really start to apply some pressure. Conditions getting very dark. The breeze still very strong in Australia's favour. 18 points to 12. Another high ball from Fox. Cutler's there. He goes high. Miller. Jeff Miller's been everywhere for Australia, but New Zealand get a bit of a drive on here. And it's come out for Deans. Now to Fox. High ball. This is a tester. Martin racing back. It's coming down near the crossbar. And too far. Australia again found wanting in that kickoff area. Not able to consolidate and be able to drive back as the... Uh, all Blacks have been able to do. Liner has kicked from 22 to 22. That one landed right on the line. And this is Fox as Horan comes through. And good pass here for Kerwin. Australia converge and tackle well. Wetton's there. Kern's there for Australia holding him. Here it comes for Deans. And a clever little kick. Campisi still in play. Great skills. Now it's Martin. Keeping New Zealand pinned in their territory. Look at this kick. It's a beauty! Quick line out, Gallagher now. Good play, New Zealand. Very composed at the back and taking play back outside the 22. Pretty to watch. Good skills shown all across the field that time. David Campisi perched on the, uh, on the sideline like a tight wire artist. Greg Martin putting in his couple of bobs worth and good defense by the All Blacks to react quickly to what could have been a nasty situation. A lot of pushing going on. Oh, good work there by Brewer. Tackled by McIntyre. New Zealand hungry that time with the ball. Pushing Australia back. It's very good body height again from the New Zealand pack. Six points the difference. 15 minutes to go for Bob Dwyer and his Australian team. Can he pull off a famous victory? <laughs> Another good scrum for Australia. Far Jones coming through. Shelford cleared well. Deans again just chips high. Martin. Deans the tackler. Timon there. Timon's been a tower of strength for Australia today. Very strong in the air as well. New Zealand again. Forcing Australia back. Now Lowe's going in like a rabbit for the ball on the ground. This is Kerwin. To Fox and Schuster looking for a run. Schuster caught by Liner. Beautiful tackle. Brewer's there now, and McIntyre, New Zealand drive in again. Very strong wind here, Fox ahead, astute kick. Just too far though. Oh, the breeze really took that one across the touchline and we come right back to the halfway line. Things just not going quite New Zealand's way at the moment. And it's a six point lead their way. Australia never in front in the game. 14 minutes to go. Verda try would tie it all up for Australia. Here comes Kearns through on Dean since a good tackle by the hooker, but superb support there from Wetton. Cutler in for the tackle. McDowell there. Cleared the ball to Shelford. Australian swarming in. And it looks as though Phil Kearns was just a little premature that time. Just a little bit too keen there, the youngster. Deans. They play on quickly now to Wetton. New Zealand catching Australia a little bit by surprise. Retire 10 metres, Australia, says the referee. Deans comes again. Here he goes. Miller the tackler. Now it's Fitzpatrick. He was barreled by Campbell. This is Shelford. Oh, the tackling is tremendous here. Both sides throwing themselves into the fray. Ball available again. This is Richard Lowe into Cutler. Fitzpatrick drives in. Can New Zealand spin it wide now? There's a very good line. This is Brewer and Schuster. He's still going. Campisi holds on. New Zealand with a big chance. Shelford wants to get it out wide. A try could win it for New Zealand now. Fox, they want the big one. And it's right. He went without it. 
Four in there for Australia. Lost ahead. And a scrum here for the Australians. Alex Wiley desperately wanted that try. Gallant defence. Reminiscent of 86 at Good Eaton continuity Park. by the All Blacks, but uh, no finish. They haven't been able to put in the cruncher right at the end. Great defence by Australia. Good tackling. They're spreading wide, taking a man, and they're really lining him up and driving him across towards the touchline, putting in great pressure. The test match is still in the balance here. New Zealand, though, in the driver's seat. And the Australian scrum again. Providing an excellent platform. Eleven minutes remaining in the game now. Martin and Liner back there. He wants a big kick. And he's really pulverised that ball back over halfway. But Gallagher now runs back at the Australians. Ian Williams can't take his man. And Gallagher into touch. His teammates can. Poitavan and Tyneman. Both played in that victory for Australia in 86 here at Eden Park. In fact, the five back forwards did for Australia. You see the enthusiasm there of the back row of Simon Poitavan and Steve Tyneman coming through, really wanting to get get hold of Gallagher only give me one option to go into touch pulling out the gang tackle Gary good work working as a pair Harry Pierce jumping off shoulders holding Cutler down that time and so now Michael Liner coming up and uh, he's going to look for the far touch New Zealand from inside their 22 and Australia has the throw into the line out now but it's five meters into New Zealand's half Australia, Australia just trying too hard there the, the ball really should be putting in fairly close to that 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 uh, touch line to get the ball into there so they can get uh, less options for the All Blacks to be able to find ground off a, off a, a returning kick Bruce Deans now and Fox Terry Wright's following this one. Martin inside the 22. Plenty of time, no pressure. Certainly the time to unleash a big one. And he's done just that. 30 metres out. It's time now for Australia to play with the ball in their hand. They've got them with themselves down to the 22. It's now to be able to play that, those, those mini rucks and mini balls. Move the ball wide. When the All Blacks have got it, they should be required, required to go up and do the tackle, pick the ball up and pass and move it away from their bigger forwards. Alan Wetton doing well. Low picks up and offside play by Australia. Well, just spoiling themselves again. First knock on, though, by New Zealand. Australia getting close. And Australia needs to chase hard. Gallagher's underneath, and he took it brilliantly. And he's been played the mark on the goal line. Well, if that wins the game for New Zealand, don't be too surprised. Still Great. plenty of time left, though, for Australia to get level. Nine minutes remaining. Great test for Gallagher on the move. Australia had the runners through that time, but uh, clever footballer. Australia's got to control their own destiny here. Whenever they can get hold of that ball, compete for it in this line out. You'll see here it's a shorter line out, so therefore giving the jumpers a bit more room, a bit less, less uh, chance of being interfered with. Campbell Bar Jones well. to liner. Quick hands now to Poitavan. He sees the corridor. Good tackle by Wetton. Good set up too. Here's Campisi. Campisi, a banana kick. Five metres from the goal line. Campisi got it back to Miller. Now Kearns is there. Slips it back now between his legs. Or trying to. Liner and Walker. Walker goes himself. Well, that's the ball Australia want. And they get the scrum feed. Difficult situation that time with the All Blacks lined out in defence. Walker going up, Walker going up a little bit softly and uh, not ensuring that the uh, 
uh, that the ball was won by Australia. That was the time when it was from broken play. Well, a converted try would have the scores level. Australia marching New Zealand here. The scrum goes down. This is Far Jones. And here comes Martin trying to bust through. New Zealand were waiting for that one. They got away with it against the Lions. Now it's Liner. Liner tries to straighten. New Zealand driving back. He got the pass away to Kearns. And then he got it to Far Jones. Now it's Campbell. The players are very tired here. And the referee says it went forward. The all back backs up offside on the far side, cutting out the option for Australia. Desperately trying to get the ball back. Going a little bit far out of their grasp, and they weren't able to... Uh, they didn't have any players deep enough to run onto the ball. They are all flat. Chris Simon Poitman there in the background has called in the Australian forwards. One last effort here. It's one last hurrah for Simon Poitman. That's Mike Brewer. He's down for attention. But the Australians know that the converted try would tie the scores. I've certainly, certainly tested this all-black combination today. We haven't seen Alan Wetton. We've seen very little of... Uh, of Buck Shelford at the back. He's been unable to penetrate. Gary Wetton was quietened by a facial injury early. McDowell has stood out hands and shoulders, uh, head and shoulders above the rest. It's just been difficult for the All Blacks to uh, finish on the flanks. Wright seen nothing of it. Kerwin's uh, been well marked and uh, it's Schuster and Stanley have been the ones uh, left to do the line busting. Grant Fox again with the safety of the touchline. 30 metres out, six minutes to go. Australia trailing by six. Again, Australia will play the short line out again here, looking for that uninterrupted possession coming from their tallest line out men. Australia again will be looking to run onto the ball, run it straight, commit the All Blacks. Cutler at the back well to Campbell. Campbell charges ahead. And the referee says it wasn't in straight. That's been a bit of a problem area for the Australians, but in defence of the man throwing in very difficult conditions for the youngster Kearns. Very blustery breeze here. Shelford and Deans. Rick Martin down the touchline. And this is Gallagher. Again, very sound at the back. No angle that time. And Clyde Norling says, touch 30 metres out. Five minutes to go. Still the gold jerseys pile on the pressure. Territory is theirs. They're getting possession. They just need to get a little bit of uh, continuity, a little bit of flow from one play to the next. Working desperately to get the ball, which is good to see. Cutler got it. And the New Zealanders come through on the ball. That's Fitzpatrick. Well, Australia just tapping it back. New Zealand praying on the crumps. Now it's Brewer and Liner. Liner's tackled extremely well in midfield for Australia. Here they go again. Fox goes short side. There's numbers here. He sees a gap. He's gone straight through. Grant Fox now and Kerwin looms. John Kerwin. Numbers here for New Zealand again on the 22. Australia can't give a penalty away, let alone concede a try because that'll be the end of the game. Steve McDowell. New Zealand drive on. Fitzpatrick. And the penalty goes Australia's way. One of the Australians appears to be almost unconscious. I think it's Tony Daly. No, it's not Daly. Bill Campbell. Good drive by the All Blacks that time. All started from a loose ball from the line out. Sweeper not coming. Break made by Fitzpatrick. Continued on by the All Blacks using the line as their friend. The ball back to Deans. Uh, to, uh, sorry, Grant Fox. They asked during the week whether this bloke... Uh, was as good as Michael Liner. Fox showing that time when there was the gap that he could run into it and set up play. You can see the great advantages there of running, moving in with body height. Each of those players that came and picked the ball up, they had the option either to drive through, take a player out, or pick it up and run on. There's a tremendous discipline in New Zealand rugby that all forwards coming in run with about very, very close to the ground. Well, I suppose not too many Australians can bear to watch this kick because if Grant Fox gets it, the Bledisloe Cup is safe in New Zealand. We have four minutes remaining. But New Zealand's very settled team. As we mentioned, only the one change to their lineup in the last six test matches. They know each other's play so well. 
although they've been unsettled by this gallant Australian team today, they've just had that little bit more cohesion and certainly had the better controlled line-out ball. Gary Wetton has been a tower of strength at the front in that regard. But it's not an easy kick for Fox. It's only eight metres in. He's on the 22-metre line. And this will clinch the Bledisloe Cup for New Zealand if successful. Three minutes to go. And it's swinging and misses. Australia still alive. Horan touches down. Oh, that was very close, say the Australian players. Here's Campisi. And a big drop kick downfield. Straight to Grant Fox. Back to Stanley. And Gallagher looms. The Australian's a bit slow to come up here. Gallagher, driven back by Poitavan. What a lion-hearted performance from Simon Poitavan today. Now it's Fox again. There are a few gaps appearing in the Australian back. Stanley went without it. Horan picks up. The referee, I think, playing the advantage here. Appeared to be a knock-on by Stanley, but no, he says not. Now it's Grant Fox hugging the touchline. That's a real heartbreaker. Three minutes now. Two minutes, says the clock. 120 seconds for Australia to pull it off. Not one the draw Australian, is their best result. Not one Australian forward has given up the ghost. Simon Poitavan driving in that time as he's done most of the game. Full, total, full and total commitment. They've played their hearts out. There's been some limitations with getting this new combination together. A short period of time, but they've done extremely well. And there, Bill Campbell, the Queensland captain, showing the pain of a heavy scrum earlier. Tim Gavin is coming on, Chris, in the last two minutes of play. Well, a marvellous effort here by big Bill Campbell. He certainly has been a, an inspiration as the Australian forward leader this afternoon. He struggled with a rib injury, Bill Campbell, in the latter part of the season. And Tim Gavin has been cleared to run onto the field. He's on for his fourth cap. His first was against the All Blacks at Ballymore last year in the 19-0 draw. Got a lot of enthusiasm from Tim Gavin here. He's had a big season so far this year. Worked very, very hard and been very unlucky not to be been selected in any of the major games. Big jump by Pierce. Now they clear it wide to Stanley in space. Australia has somehow got a pill for this ball. New Zealand roll it. Fitzpatrick is there, charging ahead like a wild rhinoceros. Australia hold on McDowell. Desperate defence here. One minute, 50 seconds to go. New Zealand close, and there's the try. That's it. The British Low Cup. And Richard Lowe has scored the try, his first ever in a test match. And what a time to do it. Australia's courageous and very brave effort here today is at an end. All smiles for New Zealand. And it was their great forwards who did it. You said it true, Gordon. Steve McDowell, Richard Lowe really pulled out a good performance in there. The back row, they've overshadowed the back row by far today. And it's fitting that they should score underneath the post to seal the uh, Bledisloe Cup. Well, the scoreboard doesn't reflect the story of this game. New Zealand by 22, 24 points to 12, exactly double Australia. But they've been made to fight tooth and nail by the Australian team. Well, as we can see here, Stanley had made advantage line, but the forwards got there fast, and Lowe got in there, and the rest of the All Blacks behind him came right over the top, pushed him over for a great try. Yes, a great moment there for Richard Lowe from Waikato. We're inside the last 30 seconds now, and this is... John Kerwin, who appeared to put a foot into touch. No, says the referee. This is Horan. Well caught by Schuster. Is McIntyre in for the ball? And Australia look as though they'll have the last scrum of the game. But the final hooter might even beat this scrum. New Zealand by 24 points to 12. It's been a very tight test match, an enthralling struggle. And the countdown from the crowd, three seconds to go. There it goes. The referee says we'll have it in, please. 
Last chance for Australia to score a try. Put it down, says the referee. Now it's Michael Liner and Walker. Campisi! Here's Tim Horan. Horan now to Williams. Williams still going. He's almost through. Tyneman. Last ditch effort from the gallant Australians. New Zealand player diving in over the ball. They'll go for a tap here. Well, if only the Australian outside men had received more ball in this game. But full credit, though, to New Zealand. They've deprived Australia of, the, of that vital possession. And this is Gary Wetton. Play has to continue now that the penalty has been awarded. We're certainly in injury time. Referee actually putting the ball down himself away from the injured man so that play can continue. So Australia set it up here. He's Lino with the kick over the top and it's a scramble. The match is all over. The crowd goes up. An epic victory here for New Zealand against a very determined and courageous Australian side. 24 points to 12. Well done, All Blacks, and well done, Australia, too. They certainly played their hearts out. Comments, Chris Handy, Gary Pearce. Well, Gordon, Australia went into this game and they knew that they were going to do it tough. They had to get possession. They got enough, but it wasn't enough on the day. They did test the All Blacks particularly well. Rarely have you seen the All Blacks so, uh, uh, so disjointed. No flow in their play, and that was uh, due in part to the hard driving uh, play and the driving tackling of the Australians. Some new experiments. Horan did very well at outside centre. Always stayed on his feet and maintained possession. Daly at loose head was strong. Kearns in the scrum was good. He struggled with his put-ins to the, uh, to the line-outs. But uh, Australia really need to look now towards the, uh, the Tour of France and to use this game and the performances to uh, help in the selection of a team that uh, can really go on and uh, consolidate there. Well, it was a very interesting game. You could see the All Blacks probably didn't have one of their best games, but they stuck to their guns. They stuck to their game plan. At the end of the day, there were players that didn't play up to their potential, but because they had understood where they were going, that's why they won the game. Well, the Australian team certainly tried hard with a lot of enthusiasm. But still some questions have to be asked on how the, the Australian direction or the game plan's being put together on the ground. Enthusiasm got kept Australia in the game, but it was only really to the last couple of minutes did we see but the, the true game plan, it should have been employed, moving it wide, keeping it alive, keeping the ball, players running onto it. Um, you only got to try in the last bit. If we'd been able to do that earlier on, it could have been a very different game. So the victorious All Black side followed in by Australia. And congratulations to the Australian side. They've certainly had their knockers back home. And I think a few critics back home would be uh, chewing on their newspapers. And Wayne Shelford holds a lot the Bledisloe Cup. New Zealand deserved winners here this afternoon. And the crowd really savouring this moment. They're used to New Zealand winning internationals. They've now gone 17 without loss big win made a big difference to both sides uh, thank you to the All Blacks last game of the New Zealand home series and we've we got five out of five also to the public out there and all placement play test matches this year thank you for all your support and I think uh, last but not least I must say a special thank you to the man who wasn't here today it's Michael Jones who's watching on the television thanks very much Mike for your uh, for your service this year I hope to see you in England and Ireland. Ireland and Wales, sorry. Thanks very much. Triumphant New Zealand skipper, Wayne Shelford. Inspiring leader of the All Black Pack, Nick Farr Jones. Firstly, obviously, congratulations to the All Blacks. You've had a great season again. You've carried on from 87 and 88. And you're undefeated from those years. You again showed that you've got what it takes to win when the pressure's on. And I talk about pressure because I think the Australian team put plenty on you. And I thank my players very much for that effort, the tremendous commitment, 
and unfortunately we just fell down at the end but let's give credit when it's due and all blacks you deserved your win finally i'd like to uh wish you all blacks a good tour to the uk and i know that we'll go to france the australian team with plenty of spirit plenty of commitment and i know that we'll do well there cheers Very eloquent words there from the Australian skipper, who certainly, like his 14 teammates, tried their hearts out this afternoon. And uh, I, for one, was very proud of the Australian performance here against very great odds. Very tight game. Only New Zealand in the last couple of minutes scoring that try to seal it. 24 points to 12, the final score. We're standing by for an interview. And down there in the tunnel is Peter Williams. Well, problems there uh, technically for uh, Television New Zealand, but uh, Gary Pierce and Chris Handy, a very exciting game. The best side won on the day, but uh, I think... Uh, Full marks to the Australians for sticking to it and giving New Zealand such a hard fight. Yeah, well, it was a very exciting game. It was pretty cold up here, but it kept <laughs> us kept us warm, um, jumping up and down on tries and running around. But and it was a great game, and I think the enthusiasm shown by the Australian players showed that Australia's got the skills out there. All they need to be able to mould those skills together over the next couple of years, and the World Wouldn't Cup can be a real, a real um, well, I think um, award for us. With those yes, boys. Chris. Um, New Zealand have been a very settled combination very good team Australia throwing in all those new faces maybe one or two more games under their belt uh, the result could be turned well Gordon there's uh, a few of these players who are retiring a few not available for France uh, South Africa of course looms uh, in the background uh, there will be changes to the Australian team and it's uh, probably up to the selectors to pick the team to go onwards they need a combination uh, they need to pick that combination for 1991. You just can't appear at that time with the side and say we're here to win it. They've got to start now, and uh, with Kearns and others, they've uh, got a good young combination. Yes, well, it uh, was a great moment for Richard Lowe, although we're going now to Peter Williams with Nick Far jones Happened, but um, it shows what a great team they are when the pressure's on and they, they can produce that last five minute when they get the, the forwards rolling on and place pick up and uh, makes it very difficult and uh, that's probably why they're undefeated since 87. Are you a bit annoyed that you couldn't cash in more with the use of the wind in the second half? Yeah, we've well, got to have possession. Um, it's taken nothing away from our forwards because I think they were terrific today. Um, but, you know, in the second half when you've got the wind, while it's a big advantage, uh, once you've got the ball in the hands, it's difficult because it makes it harder for the line-out fillers. You know, the ball blowing away from them and um, we sort of really didn't get control ball there as we would have liked to have. And as I say, you've got to have possession to play field position and uh, we didn't have it. But I think the forwards put up a tremendous effort, some great uh, tackling and some great driving. Nick Fair jones all the best for your tour to France later on in the year. And we'll see you back in New Zealand for three more tests next year. Yeah, cheers. Bye. <laughs> Nick Fair jones Yes, well, Peter Williams there with Nick Fair jones And uh, thanks very much to Chris Handy.